Welcome to Unity of Wilmington, coming to you from Wilmington, North Carolina. My name's Reverend Mindy Tucker, and it is my honor to be with you in this moment, knowing that we're going to be joined by Terrell Williams in song, and of course, we're accompanied by Paul Miller on piano. We're grateful that you are here in this moment, that you have an interest in expanding consciousness and personal transformation, that there is something alive in you, knowing that there's only one presence and one power active in the universe and in our lives, a presence and a power that in unity we call God. So grateful for an awakened soul like yourself bringing this truth to light in the world. Let us begin with a time of prayer. I'm going to keep my eyes open, but I invite you to enter into this sacred time in the way that you're most comfortable, that allows you to turn your attention inward to that astounding light that lives within you, that light of love, that light of wisdom, a light of compassion and truth, especially a light that brings us peace. Thank you, thank you, God, divine mind, all that is source energy for being the reminder of the strength of our convictions. And so it is. Amen. In some far off place And it causes you To rethink some things You start to sense That slowly you're becoming someone else And you find yourself When you meet new friends in a brand new town and you start to think about settling down the things that would have been lost on you are now clear as a bell and you find yourself that's when you find yourself you go through life so sure of where you're headed and you wind up lost and it's the best thing that could have happened because sometimes when you lose your way it's really just as well because you find yourself yeah, that's when you find yourself When you meet the one You've been waiting for And they're everything That you want and more You look at them And slowly you're living for someone else because you find yourself yeah that's when you find yourself you go through life so sure of where you're headed and you wind up lost this is the best thing that could have happened because sometimes when you lose your way it's really just Because you find yourself, yeah, that's when you find yourself. Because you find yourself, yeah, 
that's when you find yourself. Thank you so much. Many spiritual teachers articulate the wisdom of accepting what is, of loving what is. It's a spiritual practice that allows us to open ourselves up to infinite potentiality, to the vastness of the possibilities that exist all around us. It's a spiritual practice that begins to untangle knots of judgment that keep us bound to the past. In one translation of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus instructs us, to untangle the knots of error that bind us. And that's what the spiritual practice of accepting does for us. Accepting clears our mind. Accepting gives us an opportunity to release the tension from our body. Just even thinking about accepting our shoulders come down from around our ears. And what happens in our body is we produce less of the stress hormones that we require when we're knotted up. And with that reduction in stress hormones, our body actually has an opportunity to spend its energy boosting our immune system. And in 2020, we certainly need that boost to our immune system. So here's the question. When you take a look at your life, when you go within, is everything you see fixed, permanent, solid, immovable, inflexible? Do you see how static things are? Oh, no. No, no, no. The answer would be no. No, when we look around us, we see how everything is changing, how everything is moving, how everything is just dancing with all kinds of different energies. That's what happens when we look around in the world. I've decided that the person who invented the whack-a-mole game had a deep understanding for humanity. I don't know if you know whack-a-mole, but there's these little holes, and up comes the mole. And the mole, in, if we consider it as a metaphor for life, the moles that pop up are things like relationship issues, or a financial crisis, or a health challenge. And we mistakenly believe when this mole pops up, if we can pound it down, then everything else will be stable. We think, great, I've mastered this. Boom, here comes another one. It's just how life works. But what if, what if, you know, sometimes it's a dangerous question, and sometimes what if can be the most powerful question that we can ask ourselves. What if life's challenges were actually here for our good? What if roadblocks and obstructions actually served a greater purpose? And what if we embraced them rather than resisting them? What if hardships were actually here to support us? What if problems were actually our allies in learning? What if glitches were a way for us to expand our consciousness? What if all of these things were happening for our good. What if they were just, you know, one giant cosmic setup for success? Unity teaches that we can use our relationship issues, our financial crises, and or our health challenges for our good. We can take the best out of them. We can learn from them. In Hebrew scriptures, in the book of Genesis, there was a guy named Joseph, and Joseph ends up getting thrown in a pit and then sold into slavery. 
In unity, we look at things metaphysically. And so we're every part of the story. Here's what happened. Perhaps it's an artist's impression of what happened. And I don't know. Well, here's what I know. Every one of us at some time in our life has had this experience. I mean, be honest. We've had experience like this where we have, we metaphysically recognize that we're Joseph and we've been thrown in the pit and our troubles are looming larger than life. We are Joseph when we've been sold into slavery to a belief system, belief system, B-S, when we've sold our thinking to something that doesn't have substance, that doesn't have an underlying foundation, and we feel out of control. But like our lives, like the vista of our lives, there's always going to be another mole popping up in the moment, and this is the gift of our ability to be Joseph, in the moment we accept what is. So we're in the pit. So we've been sold into slavery to a belief system. In the moment, we accept what is so that we can be in the next moment clearer, cleaner, stronger, wiser. In the next moment, and then in the next moment. And like life, like that vista of life that we see in our own world, the story changes. Everything changes. The unknown becomes known. And eventually we're in a place like Joseph was at the end of the story where he says to his brothers, you, have, you may have meant these things for evil, but God meant them for good. God meant them for good. So when we accept what is, we're available to accept the gift of what is, what's going on. And we, need, we, we can use that to expand our consciousness, inspire our personal transformation. Jeff Foster wrote a book called The Deepest Acceptance, and in the beginning, the very beginning of the book, he quotes a little bit of Hafiz, and it says this, I wish I could show you, when you are lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your own being. And I love this. I feel like this wraps around my heart heart. It supports and comforts me because right now I have a lot of loneliness going on with the wisdom or how prudent it is to be separate from other people. I miss people. I miss the connection with people. I miss my friends. I miss my adult children. I have an eight-month-old grandson that I have never hugged why? Because right now it's prudent to physically separate myself from them. I accept my loneliness as right now. This is where I'm supposed to be. Right here, right now. It's like, what if all of this is going on for my greatest good? What if all of this is going on for your greatest good, that you and I are where we are by divine appointment, that the very thing we need to learn is right here in this moment, and our ability to accept it, to allow it, is what's going to free us and open us up. The darkness. I believe that, yes, we're in the darkness, but the darkness is not a total void. In my darkness, in our darkness, there are thoughts. There are feelings. I mean, 
you can still see me. I'm alive. I haven't yet ascended. I still have thoughts. I still have feelings. I still have sensations and experiences. So in the darkness, it's not a total void. So while I am in the unknown, while things are always moving and always changing and dancing, I am still with thoughts, feelings, sensations. My light, my astounding light, illuminates them. They, they illuminate, my consciousness illuminates the movement of thoughts, the movement of feelings, the movement. They come into my mind, they go out of my mind. I have a feeling and then I don't have a feeling. I hear a sound and then the sound goes away. All through the day, Things are coming into my consciousness and going out of my consciousness. The astounding light that you are, that I am, that we are together illuminates the movement and it's good to notice what they are so we can pick them up and we can accept them right for where, where we are by divine appointment. Jeff Foster also uses the analogy or the metaphor of the ocean. He compares the ocean to our consciousness. And he says, just like there's a Pacific Ocean, an Indian Ocean, or an Atlantic Ocean, there is a Mindy consciousness, there's a Nikki consciousness, there's a Paul consciousness, there's your consciousness. We are, our consciousness is a vast, open space. I don't know if you've ever had the opportunity to stand at the edge of the ocean or maybe even a great lake because those are big, vast experiences too. But let me tell you, when you stand on the edge of the ocean, you can see forever. The vastness of the universe is before you. I mean, the curvature of the earth takes over before the end of what we're looking at occurs. That's how we are. Mindy consciousness, your consciousness, is vast and it's limitless and it goes on forever and ever. And somewhere in the ocean that we are and the ocean that we see, there are giant waves rising up and crashing against each other. And in that same ocean, there is a placid sea where the swells rise and fall but look like glass. The beauty of the ocean is that those waves are not separate from it. Those waves are a part of it. Just as our thoughts, our feelings, our sensations, our experiences, they're like waves of experiences. Thought is a wave. Sound is a wave. A feeling is a wave. They're all a part of who and what we are in consciousness. If you know anything about the sea, you know that the deeper you go, the less the water is affected by the waves at the top. So the water in the depths, it doesn't even really care much about what the waves are doing because the deeper and deeper and deeper the water goes, the ocean goes, the more aware it is of who and what it is, solid, still, divine, divine nature. When I think about going deep, I'm reminded of Jesus when he went to Pontius Pilate. He was brought before Pontius Pilate, and Pontius Pilate began questioning him and interrogating him And he was saying things, you know, he was trying to get Jesus to respond. And he was like, 
Are you king of the Jews? Are you engaged in seditious activity? Are you trying to usurp someone else's authority? Just what are you up to? And in the 27th chapter of Matthew, this is what Jesus is reported to say. Jesus gave Pilate no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. When we tune in to the deepest part of ourselves, even we have the capacity to be amazed. We have the capacity to be amazed. Now, I'm going to give you another example, and you're going to think, oh, that's so frivolous, but it's exactly the same principle. And principle can be applied to something we think is super important or something that we don't deem as important. But the the truly important part, to say important one more time, is that we practice the principle, that we have the spiritual practice of going deep and finding that place inside us where nothing can touch us, nothing, no waves of anything can disturb us. So I was getting certified to become a scuba diver. And we had to do a number of things in order to get certified, swim across the pool, up and down, all those other things. But one of the activities that we had to do was we had to take off our equipment, and then we had to put it back on while we were underwater. So the tanks, no problem. Take off your air tanks, put them back on. Take off your weight belt, put it back on, no problem. Even my fins, you know, no problem. But the mask, big problem. Everybody was supposed to, underwater, take off their mask, put it back on, blow out the water. And I was petrified. I was petrified. There was something in that activity that had me stirred up, that had my fear going, that gave me an emotional construct that just wasn't healthy. It just, and it wasn't rational. It wasn't rational. I mean, who in their right mind would do something like that? In my mind, I was being a little bit of piloty there. But the day came when the dive was scheduled to be, and so it was unavoidable for me if I wanted to get certified. We all went down. The class sat on the ocean floor. It was actually a reef ledge, but about 30 feet under the surface. And we all sat in a big circle, and the instructor pointed to one student at a time, and it came to be my turn, and I just knew I was going to die, but I wanted to get certified. All of a sudden, I took off my mask. I looked at it. I turned it this way, I turned it that way, I lifted it up, I put it down. I was so caught up in my own amazement. Even the instructor got a little impatient. He got impatient, he was like, put it back on, put it back on. I'm like, but I got it off, I got it off. This was so exciting. So eventually I put it back on, I blew out the water, and I got certified. But I think what this demonstrates is that we have each of us has an astounding capacity to amaze ourselves with how deep we can go in any circumstance with any rational or irrational challenge. We can learn from our problems. We can see them as our allies. We can use them in some kind of cosmic way to open ourselves up to a broader, a broader view of the vastness of our consciousness, the vastness of the sea. Jeff Foster says this, And so, whether the ocean appears as a thought wave, a pain wave, a fear wave, a sadness wave, a wave of excitement, a wave of joy, or any other way, the ocean knows that on the deepest level, all these appearances are okay. They have a home in what you are. I love the idea of home. A Course in Miracles has a line that says, we are at home in God, dreaming of exile. In other words, exile is an illusion. Our separation from all that is, from source energy, is a dream. And it's not the kind of dream you want to have. It's the kind of bad dream you have at night that you wake up going, I don't want to dream that dream anymore. 
It's an illusion. Exile is an illusion. We are at home in God. And what that's really telling us, that acceptance is our nature. Acceptance is our nature. And I know there are things we want to accept. We want to accept those gentle swells on the placid sea that looks like glass. We want to accept those waves of experience that are wise and wonderful. Have you ever tried to hold water in your hand? Like, really keep it in your hand? There are too many cracks. It's just not going to happen. The same can be said for a rogue wave on the beach. Have you ever tried not to get knocked over by that rogue wave? Acceptance and resistance. Trying attachment and resistance are futile. They're futile. In fact, I'll I'll say it again. Attachment and resistance are at the root of all suffering. Like when we try to do that, what we're really trying to do is hold on to an image of ourselves that's, that's fleeting. In one moment, we may have had a success, but we got to keep working because, you know, there's going to be another moment. And in the next moment, we got to accept what is. Because if we get attached to something and try to hold on to it, not only is it futile because all waves are made from the essence of water, It's going to try to suck us out like the tide. It's going to try to drag us into the past, into an eddy, into a riptide, into something that's not healthy. So attachment and resistance really are the root of all suffering. The deepest acceptance of life is allowing that which has already happened or is happening right now. When we're in the pit... Best to accept what is. Oh, look, I am in the pit. When we have been come enslaved to a false belief system, best to ride out those consequences, to just live them right out and have them come right through our body. Let them become as ephemeral as the permanence of a wave. Let them go. Allow them to be. Acceptance can only happen in the present moment. In this moment, we can accept what is. Acceptance isn't something that's going to come in the future. It's not something that we can hope for or work for or beg for or pray for. It's not something that's out there outside of us, which brings me to the point that acceptance may be different than you have conditioned to think about it. You're conditioned, we've been conditioned to think about acceptance as go along to get along or I can take it. Go ahead. I can take it. That's the kind of conditioning that many of us have received about acceptance. But acceptance is more than that. It's more than holding your breath long enough so that you can outlast the guy next to you and get your way. You know, we stubborn people, we stubborn stoic people know all about that. Acceptance happens in this present moment. It happens right now. The power, the power of acceptance in this present moment is a way of being. It's not a way of doing. It's not a way of having. It's a way of being. And there is great power in our way of being. Unity's co-founder Charles Fillmore said this, the power that rules the world is within us. Our power power that rules the world is within us. My power that rules the world is within me. Your power that rules the world is within you. And the moment is now. The moment is right now. 
I'm going to bring it all together in an affirmation so that Bruce Kinney can take us into a time of meditation. And here's the affirmation. My consciousness is as vast as the ocean. That means it's further than the eye can see, and it's deeper than we'll ever, ever know. My consciousness is as vast as the ocean. All waves of thought, feeling, and experience have their home in me. They're all a part of me. The good, the bad, the ugly, the fear, the anger, the beauty, the acceleration, they're all a part of who and what we are. Acceptance is a way of being. My power to rule the world is within me. So let's say that together, or I invite you to read along and say it out loud. My consciousness is as vast as the ocean. All waves of thought, feeling, and of experience have their home in me. Acceptance is a way of being. My power to rule the world is within me. And now let's go with Bruce in a time of meditation. We take a deepening breath. Breathing in, bringing our awareness to our breath, closing our eyes, relaxing, sinking into our seat, feeling our feet on the floor, feeling our breath, breathing in, breathing out. Awareness of our breath. Breathing in, and breathing out. And as we exhale, we relax, we let go, we notice the tight places in our being, the tightness in our body, the tightness in our spirit. And as we release and let go, we open up to all the possibilities that are around us. We relax, we let go of all the beliefs that we hold to keep us from allowing that which is to be present with us and for us to be present. As we breathe in, we allow radiant divine source light to flow down through our crown filling our minds and our hearts and our bodies, feeling the light and love of God, opening our heart just a little wider each time. Breathing in, filling up, breathing out, letting go, allowing that which is to be here with us now, and in that acceptance, letting go of the tension, letting go of the need to be right, letting go of having it be something different. Breathing in, we fill ourselves with the light of all possibilities, drawing in the true power into us to see that light, even in the darkness, From the pit, we can look and see the light of others, just as they see our light shining radiantly out, illuminating the path for ourselves and for those around us. Letting go of all the things that bind us and hold us and trap us in something that used to be and opening up to the glorious wonder of what is now. Breathing in, breathing out, fully here, right here and right now. With 
one final breath, we bring our awareness back into our space. It is this time in our service where we celebrate through the act and art of giving. It is a time when we bring up that joy from within and we express it. We can share that joy here at Unity of Wilmington with a gift and a donation on our website at 717 Orchard, drop it off in person or send it in the mail, or go to the Facebook page and let that joy and gratitude flow out to all. Thank you. Feel the sun, cause your story's far from over, and your journey's just begun. Tell your heart to beat again, close your eyes and breathe it in, let the shadows fall away, step into the light of grace. Yesterday's a closing door, you don't live Say goodbye to where you've been and tell your heart to beat again. Let every heart break and every scar be the picture that reminds you who has carried you this far. Cause love sees further than I am. Everything for your good. So tell your heart to beat again. Close your eyes and breathe. Let the shadows fall away. Step into the light of grace. Yesterday's the closing door. You don't live there anymore. Say goodbye to where you've been. And tell your heart to beat again. Your heart to beat again. Beat again. Tell your heart to beat again. Incredibly powerful. Incredibly powerful. Please do tell your heart to beat again. Tell your heart to beat again. That's wonderful. Thank you, Sherelle. Which brings us to the daily word. The daily word.
word today is listen. <laughs> Wyatt, Wyatt, something's wrong. There, there we, go. we go. Sorry. So the daily word today is listen. In the quiet of your heart, listen to the voice of spirit. If you would like some support in the quiet of your heart, listening to the voice of spirit, I invite you to reach out for prayer support at Unity of Wilmington. We have a number of ways to connect. You can call 910-763-5155. On our website, there is a prayer button for prayer request, or you can email revnickygolden at gmail.com for that uplift, that reminder of the deep presence you are in your phenomenal capacity to listen to the voice of spirit. And something that can help, of course, is affirmations. We do three affirmations here, and the first one connects us. You are a beloved expression of God. You are here for a holy purpose. And you are here in the right place, at the right time, right now. And that place is home. You are at home in God. And I celebrate your capacity to astound yourself in accepting what is. You are the power that will change the world. God bless you.